Okay, this video is a zone C back cut to show the effects of fro. Since this five ball is seven feet from the pocket, maybe a little more than seven feet, that's about seven feet. So it's around seven feet from the pocket. I've only got about a foot for the cue ball to travel before it hits this ball. I can slow roll it and make it with no problem. The system quality is designed to handle a one to two degree throw depending on the shot angle. Happens to be at a half ball or a five eighths area, you get the most to throw. Especially if it's a stun shot, you get far more than two degrees. On a stun shot, you're going to get over four degrees of a throw, which is going to be an extra two degrees more than what this, what the numbers are telling you to do. It's going to put me here. It's going to make the ball hit right there, it's about two to three inches from the corner pocket. If I just stun the ball, so. We use some lessons out of Dr. Davies' Illustrated Principles in Pool and Billiard. It's a fine book, one of my favorite books. I've had it for a very long time. If you do not have a copy of Dr. Dave's book, go to Google, Google Dr. Dave Billiards. The Illustrated Principles of Pool and Billiards will pop up there. You can find you a copy for a reasonable price. It's a great book. And actually, his website has a lot of the information on there for free. But if you're like me, I want, I want something tangible. I want the book in my hands. So, if I just float this ball, at the half, I set up a half ball shot. For those of you that have the book, you probably recognize the position value that I've got this ball sitting on. And my alignment value tells me it's a half a ball. What makes zone C a little more complicated on back cuts is your alignment value is the long, is the, the short rail way down the other end of the table, the end rail. And it is a little more complicated to determine an approximate alignment value on a rail that's seven or eight feet away or nine feet away, depending on the table size you're playing on. But this looked to me like it's a half ball alignment, so I'm going to aim right the half ball aim. As long as I roll, the cue ball is rolling into the five, I'm going to make it as long as the speed is enough to get the five to the pocket. If I shoot it too firm, trying to roll it, the cue ball is actually going to slide a little bit and then hit the five. If it slides all the way into the five, it's a stun shot. The stun shot's going to give me that little shot that hits me about there instead of there. We don't want that. So according to Dr. Dave and a lot of other experts that have put the time in to do the studies, you can eliminate the extra amount of throw that occurs from a, from a stun or from the speed that, it, that a stun shot requires. We're putting backspin or draw, we draw on the cue ball, top spin on the cue ball, or a little bit outside spin. So there are four ways we can make this ball. A stun shot is not one of them. If you're going to use a stun shot, then you have to overcut it. The system says it's a half ball. If you're going to stun it, I don't know where you have to aim to do it. It all depends on the condition of your ball, the amount of friction that's going to be right there. So that's all guesswork. To take the guesswork out, you can roll it, put draw on it, put top spin, or put a little bit of outside. Now that is also a little guesswork because we're deviating from the center of the cue ball. If we aim straight at the aim point from anywhere on the center of this cue ball, we, we know exactly where we're aiming. Once we start applying some outside spin to help throw this to the right, it's a feel shot. You have to feel how much spin to use and then it just becomes a different shot then. But here's what the float looks like. I'm just going to float it with some good speed a good medium shot, maybe medium soft. Make sure the cue ball is rolling when it hits the five, right at the half ball. I'm probably one full tip above center. Just like that. Cue ball comes back into the center of the table about. A little softer maybe I would have been in the center of the table. Now if I wanted to get on this ball and shot it hard enough to do this, I possibly would have slid into the five ball instead of rolled into it and sliding into it would have created a stun shot and I would have hit the ball on the end rail down there instead of the pocket. I mean this is what the stun shot looks like. I'll shoot the same shot, same angle. Here's the stun shot. Okay, center ball, right at the half ball aim. We missed it by three inches. Just happened to be a dead bank. So, we don't want to stun the ball. We can roll it like I just did and make it the shot before. 
or we can use some draw, which is convenient if you have to get to a ball that's say thin here next, and you need to make both of these balls down there, then I know I can shoot a little, I don't want to shoot this, jacked up off the end rail to bring the cue ball back here to shoot the five next. I can shoot the five, just to, which is a decent draw stroke, good medium speed, the cue ball's gonna come over here like this and then come straight back across for the 15. Let's try to do that one. Of course, what I'll do is miss, but I'm going straight to half ball lane, knowing I'm not gonna stun it because I'm gonna put some backspin on it, and the backspin will reduce the friction when they collide. Like this. Shot a little firm, but I can still cut this ball down. The other shot, I keep setting this in the same position. Like if you've got the book, you'll understand I'm in zone C, and you may recognize the position I'm putting this ball on and the alignment value that I'm lining it up for to get my half ball shot. Now the other shot with using top spin is a little bit tricky because I'm so close to this ball when I shoot it firm above center and try to get this cue ball spinning forward into the five there's a really good chance that it's going to slide into the five before that spin really starts working I don't even know it's a feel you have to feel it but I'm going to I'm going to try to shoot the shot with some top spin one full tip of top straight top straight to the half ball mark so maybe we're going to bring, we're going to shoot it down here, bring the cue ball off of this rail, that rail, and then back across to shoot the nine next, and then we're out if we're playing a game of one pocket. I know if I stun the ball, I'm going to miss it by three inches. So I, I don't have an option of shooting this with anything besides draw top or a little bit of outside spin, but the outside spin is not going to get me where I need to get. The draw shot would, but it would have to be low left. So I can hit it, cue ball come here, there, there, and then back down table. Well, that's complicated. I'm deviating from the center of the cue ball, from the vertical center. So we're just going to shoot this. I can stop that. We're just going to shoot this. The straight top. Try to get enough top spin and a good stroke. Not to slam it, we just have to get a good follow through, good top spin. Straight to half ball in. Very tight table, I rattled the pocket. That's what happens if you're going to shoot firm from that far away with tight pockets. Um, it's a little bit tighter than a diamond. A diamond table would have would have done the same thing probably, it would have still rattled. Because you just be off a little bit on that half ball aim. When you shoot firm, it's easy to be off a little bit on your aim. So, that's really all I wanted to show, is what happens when you throw a ball. It's the same theory applies anywhere on the table, really. A stun shot is going to throw you an extra two degrees more at certain angles. Um, if it's a thin angle, the speed is what makes the difference on a thin angle. If it's a quarter ball or thinner and you're shooting it soft, you're going to get more throw out of that cut shot than you are if you just shoot it firm or put spin on or anything like that. So, but at a thicker angle like this, it's not so much the um, softness that counts. It's the stun of the ball. So I'm going to set this shot up. So another half ball shot, this ball is in zone A. I can float it, the same theory applies. If I just float through the ball, you know, I can pocket it there at half ball, I can also go there for a half ball, even on this side. Let's shoot to the right. I'm gonna float right through there. Half ball in. Just roll right through the ball. So here's what happens if I shoot the same shot but you're trying to show off or trying to prove a point and you just smack it real hard. Well, this is what's going to happen. If you're not paying attention and you stun this ball, you're going to get one of these right here. I may mean, make it the exact same aim point. This time, 
I'm going to stun the shot. Well, more than likely, I hit it above center and the cue ball rolled or spin a little bit into that five ball. I didn't really give a center hit. I don't do a lot of stun shots. There's a time for a stun shot, and this would not be one of them for me. But I'll make sure just to hit the center of this cue ball now and stun it. Now we're starting to miss the ball. It hit here. Could have hit it, could have hit there easily if my aim would have been just a little bit off. It probably was a little bit off, but a stun shot is going to cause you to miss the balls. But you can shoot the ball with draw, you can shoot it with, with top, or a little bit of outside spin, and eliminate a lot of that extra throw that's going to occur. And really, when you're, when you're this far away, you, shoot, you have to shoot it pretty firm to get a stun shot. But when you're this close, this is where I'll hit the end rail. I'll probably hit halfway between the diamond and the pocket if I stun this ball. Because I'm so close, I get a full stun shot. So, we want to avoid that. I shot the same shot from this close. I have a choice to roll through it. I can make it. Or, make sure I'm straight there. Or I can use some draw with some top. doesn't matter. The top makes it convenient because I can bring the cue ball three rails and back over to here. You know, if I had to get to this ball or something. Um, you can use draw, straight draw, half ball aim. The top would have looked like this. You can actually get used to how much English, inside English, or whatever you want to use, and start changing your aim, change your aim point, the type of spin. And with my cue, it's about two basic aim points. I say that this is a half ball shot. Straight to that corner pocket or this point. I keep picking the right hand pocket. It's my favorite side, I guess. But if I were to put this ball over there and I want to come back around the table for this area, I can shoot straight top and I'm probably going to get there. I could put top right on it. But then I have to change my aim. I can't aim right at the half ball aim with top right hand spin. That inside spin, I'm going to throw the cue ball and I'm going to overcut the nine. I know with my cue, I would aim dead center of that nine. I'd go straight through the top right hand side of this ball and aim dead center at that nine ball. That ends up being about how much throw I'm going to get or how much deflection I'm going to get. It's going to make this inside English work. Let's try one. Of course, we can do is miss it. Top right, I'm aiming straight through the top right, top right side of this cue ball. Probably a full tip, top and a full tip to the right, aiming right at the half, I mean right at the center of the nine. That's that's the shot. Now if I shot the same shot and not used any inside English where I don't have to take a chance on missing the ball. Then I would just shoot it straight top, right at the half ball aim, instead of aiming for the center of that nine. So I'm going to go right at the half ball aim. Found a miss one of them. Straight top. Good stroke. And I still get my three rails without taking a chance on missing the ball with all that squirt and business when you deviate from the center of the cue ball. But that's some zone C shots and then this, just to show how the throw works from anywhere on the table, you know, just one more shot if we're sitting here like that and I'm over here, say this is a quarter ball shot right there. If I shoot this ball firm or put a little draw or a little top or a little spin, it's still going to go in the pocket. If I shoot it softly, we're going to get a little bit of an extra throw, and it may hit right there. So you have to realize where the most throw occurs. And on a thinner cut, like this, we'll try to see if it throws it enough. I'll shoot it soft. And there it is. So, 
just keep in mind that the ball on a thin cut shot, you're going to get more throw by shooting it soft. On a thicker cut shot, you're going to get more throw by stunning the ball. And you want to know how to, how to trick it so you don't get that much throw.